one of the best managers I've ever had was at the gym where I worked as a personal trainer. And he was, God, at the time, I mean, this was like 15 years ago. He was probably in his low 40s, really fit. Like he worked at a gym, right? He was a manager of a gym, so like he worked out a lot. He taught the spinning classes. Um, but anytime you'd be like, hey, can I talk to you for a minute? You'd go into his office and he would turn away from his desk and he would turn towards you and you knew you had his full attention and, and whatever it was that he was going to give it all of his attention at that moment. And so I had been working as a personal trainer for about six months and there was a couple things that I would I kept running into. One was the cost. A lot of women wanted to hire a personal trainer but it was just really expensive. And then the other was that it often felt awkward when I was training someone I mean, I'm standing there telling them what to do and they're working out and then other people are kind of watching too, right? Like you can't help but notice if someone's at the gym working with a personal trainer. And so it always felt kind of awkward and I'd try to like find stuff kind of out of the way to do or other stuff or sometimes I'd try and do it with them so they didn't feel so weird. So I just got to thinking like, what can we do to get past this? And so I'd had this idea of like, hey, what if I trained multiple women at the same time? It, we could lower the cost of it. They wouldn't feel so weird working out because there's other like gals there with them and everybody likes to visit. <laughs> so it might even make it a little more fun because we're all working out together. So I had had this idea. I'd been thinking about it for a while. Now this is fairly common, but back then, 15 years ago, this wasn't being done yet, right? And so I go to his office. I was like, hey, Dan, can I talk to you for a minute? I have this idea. And so he's like, okay. So I sit down in the chair across from his desk and he turns towards me and he's like, all right, what's, what do you got? And I said, well, it seems like all the women are running into these you know, hurdles with money and then it feels kind of weird. And he goes, so when you say all, how many is all? And it stopped me and I was like, oh, he's not gonna like just let me get by with making this mass generalization that every woman in the gym can't afford it and wants to work out in a group. And so it was good though because it caused me like, okay, well, of all of the female members of the gym, which was probably like thousands, <laughs> I have talked to like five of them and this is what I'm finding, right? And we talked it out and he was like, no, I think this is a great idea and we went on to do it and it was great. But ever since then, anytime I make like a mass generalization, I literally see him sitting there being like, so, so when you say all, how many is all? <laughs> and so today I wanna to talk about paper clutter and how I think this relates is that when we look at a big stack of paper clutter, what do we do? We say, oh, all of that paper is horrible. It, it, all of it represents stuff that I need to do, that I haven't dealt with, I've forgotten about, I've put off, and it's all horrible and scary and bad, right? But if we actually break it down, I think what you're gonna find is that it's not all horrible. And so my job is that by the end of this video, I'm gonna convince you that you can power through paper cutter. You are totally capable. We're gonna give you the tools and it's not all bad and you can do it. Well, hi, I'm Dawn from The Minimal Mom, and we are on week three of our clutter-free January. So week one, we talked about kitchens. Last week was all about clothing, which if you did not see that playlist with the other YouTubers that joined in, I'll leave a link down below. There were so many good ideas in it. And this week, we're all talking about paper clutter. I'm a little worried that everyone's gonna drop off because like paper clutter is not fun to talk about, but I will put the link to this week's playlist down below too. I know there's gonna be some other great ideas as well, and more videos are added to it throughout the week so be sure to check back and visit it again but we were talking about paper clutter and it does not have to be scary it's not all bad we just need the right game plan when it comes to dealing with it and that's what I want to show you today so when it comes to paper clutter we generally have two different things going on here the first is old stacks of paper clutter so just all the old paper that has acquired I don't know, over the years since the last time you dealt with it. So we have the old paper clutter that we need to power through and we're gonna talk about a game plan for that today. And then we have our paper clutter system. What are we gonna put in place so that this doesn't happen again? And this is actually something that I've been talking about quite a bit more recently. And so I'm gonna link to those videos about setting up a weekly planning basket or an action center. But basically when paper comes into your house, 
where does it go? And so we talked about like the Sunday basket or the weekly planning basket and also the time will tell bin, which that in itself is what totally transformed paper clutter in our house. So I'm gonna link to those videos as well. And so today I wanna talk about how do we get through these old stacks of paper clutter? Because I know I am like you. I would look at them and it just grew into such a big thing because when you look at a stack of paper, you don't remember what's in it, you don't know what's in it, and so you just assume the worst, right? And so today we're just gonna break it down. And here's what we're gonna do, is we're gonna sort our stacks of paper into different categories. This isn't like rocket science, it's really not. And I don't expect you just to take my word for it that this system works. Here's what Nancy had to say, she's in our Take Your House Back course. She said, I have used this method three times since viewing on the course and it's amazing. I have totally cleared my kitchen table and sifted through two boxes of papers. I have a long way to go, but now I feel I'm and motivated to go forward because of the system. I still hate the fact that I have to deal with the papers, but now it doesn't seem so daunting and stressful. Isn't that cool? So it worked for Nancy and that's why I totally believe that it will work for you too. So let's show you how this works. All right, so step number one is to gather up a bunch of paper clutter. You get to decide how much you actually wanna tackle right away. So do you wanna just do a little pile to get started and get a quick win under your belt? Or do you wanna just go through your whole house and gather it all? That's totally up to you. So I have some paper clutter here. And then the next thing we're gonna do is make our categories that we're gonna sort into. We don't wanna to have too many. The key with this is big, broad categories, but you're probably gonna need something similar to these five. So the first is some kind of to-do or action. Uh, another one is to file. So this is stuff that needs to be archived. So this goes like to your file cabinet or wherever you do long-term file storage. I do have another video about that too, about using big broad categories and having the year on them. So I can link to that below. And then reference. So for me, this is my time will tell bin. So if it's something that I, I'm not gonna file, but I can't throw it away, then I put this in my time will tell bin. I don't have to do anything with it, but if I need it, I'll know where to find it. And then you can also have one for memory. So if you come across any greeting cards, kids artwork, anything that you wanna keep, then that would go in this stack. And then of course the last is to recycle, shred, toss, burn, <laughs> whatever it is that you wanna do with it. So I'm gonna lay these categories out and then we're gonna sort through some paper clutter together. And again, I use my time will tell bin for reference stuff. So I'm just gonna bring that right here so it's nice and handy to put stuff into. All right, so let's just start going through some of this. Okay, so this is kids artwork. So I'm gonna put that in my memory pile. This is a pen pal letter, letter for the boys that needs to get mailed, so that goes in my action file. These are some extra envelopes from sending out our Christmas cards. And so, um, I should, see I already came across something that doesn't fit. I'm gonna put that in the to file section because it's basically something that needs to get put away. All right, this is a Valentine that I got, so that's gonna go in the reference. Um, this is another pen pal letter. These are some receipts for our taxes, so that's gonna go in the file. These are the instructions to a game that we have, and I don't know. I don't think we'll ever revisit this. It's for dominoes, and I think we'll just look up the instructions online, so I'm gonna toss that, because I know if I like put it somewhere else, we're not gonna revisit it, so. Um, this is a thank you note, but I don't need it anymore, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna let that go. Um, this is something that I need to mail out. So I'm gonna put those there and that one. Okay. All right. Um, some extra Christmas cards and letters. I like to keep a couple of our extra Christmas cards in my memory bin. So I'm gonna put that there. Um, this is a receipt for our taxes. That's gonna go in the to file. These were some extra, the pictures I took out of for the boys room frames. So these are gonna go in my memory bin, so I'll put that there. Seed catalogs, I'm actually really excited to go through these. Because <laughs> um, I want to order seeds, like it's, I mean it's January in Minnesota, but I'm like so ready to think about spring and all that. So I'm gonna put this in my reference or my time will tell bin, because I do want to go through these, but I don't, I'm not gonna do it to do, because I don't have to do anything with them right now. 
Um, this is our family calendar and we've had some new birthdays added this year. So I want to go through it and add the new birthdays to my phone for reminders. So I'm going to put that in my to-do file. Okay. I already got rid of one pile. And what's cool is that if I wanted to stop right now, I go put my time will tell bin away and then I can go put the garbage in the garbage. None of that even has to be shredded. I could run this stuff up to the memory bin and then put this stuff in my Sunday basket and then put this with the filing cabinet. So it would take a few minutes to like put all this stuff where it needs to go. But like, do you see how quickly you can actually get through this stuff? So, all right, let's go through a little bit more stuff. Okay, I have an old uh, to-do list that can just get recycled. More of that. All right, another list. I still make paper lists. Okay, that's the same thing. All right, this needs to get mailed. God, I have a lot of stuff to mail. Birthday cards, these, these need to get mailed too. Okay, this is a picture I got from a friend. That's gonna go in my memory bin. Um, this was a Christmas card, but I'm done with it, so that can get tossed now. And a couple extra Christmas cards. I don't actually need these anymore, so we had like five extra Christmas cards. So I put one in my memory bin because I like to have one for the year, and then the rest, I... I I'm just gonna get rid of because we'll have more again next year. So do that. Some math work that can get recycled. Coloring sheets that can get recycled. Another photo, so that's gonna go in the memory stuff. Uh, more kids paper that can go. What's this? Oh, I think this is what Adeline was looking for. Music for her recital. They've still been doing Zoom piano lessons. Good, she'll be glad to find that. This was from church, so we don't need that anymore. The kids brought it home. And then an extra blank notebook. So I'm gonna put that with the kids' school supplies. So those two things need to get put away. And there you have it. We are through our paper clutter. So like I said, my time will tell Ben, we'll just go back in the cabinet where I keep it. And then now this stuff, I'm gonna put into my weekly planning basket. So let me grab that real quick. So again, back to my original story, at the beginning, we assumed that all of this paper clutter was bad, horrible stuff, right? But really, I have a few things to file. I have a stack here of stuff to get rid of, some stuff that needs to go in my memory bin. So like all that stuff, that hardly takes any time to deal with. And then this is actually what I have left to deal with. So that's much less, right, than the stacks that I started with. This actually isn't that much. And so like I said, now what I'm gonna do is put it into my weekly planning basket. So I have one folder that is for me to do. And what I wanna do is I wanna make sure, okay, can all of this stuff wait until I go through my basket again on Friday morning? And actually, I do wanna get these birthday cards in the mail today and the pen pal letters so i don't want to put those in there but otherwise the rest of this this can wait till i go now through my bin again on friday so i'm going to put that in there and then i will deal with that come friday but again it's so much less than when what i originally thought when i looked at that huge stack of paper all right now if you're like okay i i see how this works i see how it could be successful but i still have like zero energy to put towards this or feeling zero motivation. What I wanna encourage you to do is just make your categories. Just take some post-it notes, some paper, write out your categories and say, that's the only thing I have to do today. That's all I have to do. But I'm kind of thinking once you get this far, then you might decide to go a little bit further. And remember, just do like Nancy, who I talked about at the beginning. You just do one stack or pile at a time. So get that random stack off of your kitchen counter or another stack that's been on the floor in your bedroom for a while and just attack it one single stack at a time. And I think you'll find too that by breaking it down into these smaller groups, it makes it feel much more manageable and much easier to deal with. And worst case, you'll at least know what's in the piles then, right? And if there truly is anything you're forgetting or forgot to do, and they don't have to haunt you anymore, not knowing what's in them, right? So I hope this helps. I would love to know where are you at on a scale of one to 10 with paper? One being like, I've got it under control, things are going pretty good, and 10 being like, 
Oh my goodness, you don't even wanna know how many stacks and boxes I have <laughs> to deal with. Let us know down below. Let us know if you think this would work or any other tips you have for paper. And like I said, check out the Clutter Free January links down below if you want more inspiration around paper clutter, clothes, or kitchens too. So I'll put those links below. But I totally know that you can conquer paper in your house too. I love you and I will visit with you again soon.